Am I an AI voice? Am I not? You don't know. It's just one of those secrets. And that leads into our stories for today. What are secrets among your profession that the general public is unaware of? Story 1. I work in an animal shelter. We can hook you up with cheap kibble and vet care. No judgment. We know things get rough. If you're donating linens and you wash or fold beforehand, we just might cry of happiness. So much of our budget goes to the water and electricity. Ditto for special food. Supermarket and Target slash Walmart gift cards are the best because almost every animal needs a different kind of food. Also, if you donate linens that cannot fit a standard washer, we use them once and throw them out. Don't worry about what they're made of, though. It all gets thrown in together. Microchip all your pets and keep the info updated. If there's no chip, we hold them for a week and then it's off to adoptions they go. And please, don't let your cats outside unsupervised unless you have a fence. We see so many cats slip their collar or get hit by cars. Give them plenty of stimuli inside. Toys, scratching post, litter box, and they'll never know the difference. If you want a new kitten or puppy, you're gonna wait a while. But adult pets are always in need of new homes. Plus, we socialize and house train them. If you're looking for a specific breed, you're better off looking at breed-based rescues. Unless that breed is pit bulls. We get a lot of them, and they are sweeties. I can't believe there's a stigma still around pit bulls. A pit bull, as with any pet, has an attitude based on their owner's treatment of them and how they were trained. I've known many pit bulls to be the absolute sweetest pets. And I'm more of a cat person. They have the energies of puppies even well into their later years. Story 2. Almost no famous musician has any idea what they're doing. Musically, I mean. A lot of them can be characterized as very keen business people, or even terribly involved in their production. Not super secret, sure. Famous musicians who are famous for doing technically impressive genres in the electronic field still don't know what they're doing. They don't have to. Every single possible thing has been sampled, preset, packed up, and is available somewhere. I don't think it's a bad thing. In fact, the only bad thing about this is regular music listeners thinking their own vision for music would be too hard to accomplish. Not helped by artists and industry who really love showing off how complex their stuff looks. Never mind that almost none of it was needed to do what they did with it. There are AI composition programs that can analyze input from specific artists to generate new content like that artist. This has been possible in general for a while. Music theory is just music programming. But this stuff can essentially generate specific music theory for a collection of specific input. Music will never be hard again. I don't think that's going to apply just to the electronic field. There's a channel out there on YouTube that actually specifies creating 24-hour procedurally generated gent music. And that's guitar-based. I've listened to it. It sounds like the real thing. Also, as far as musicians being business-savvy but not musically inclined, it reminds me of an animated show called Metalocalypse about a death metal band called Death Clock. It's really funny. They're actually the biggest band in the world, and they're idiots about everything except playing their music and negotiating their contracts. Story 3. Your servers come back and chat junk about you to the chefs. So even though we can't see you, we know all about you. Also, if you're a regular, then there's no doubt that you have a nickname. And if you're a regular and a jerkwad, then you get poorer treatment. I browse this back in. Better make sure you put her chicken in the microwave for five minutes before you serve it because that crazy shrew always complains that the food is too cold when it's fresh off the grill. Lady Hands is in for the fourth time this week. Give the guy some extra ice cream with his dessert. Poor guy must be lonely. We remember you. We go further for the people who are nice. But if you're a jerk, then you'll get what you deserve. I've been on that side before. On the service side. I'm sure it's nothing compared to all the chaos that servers face nowadays. But yeah, we'll remember you. And just because the chefs can't see you doesn't mean they'll not know about you. The servers are the front line. And if they're a good kitchen, they'll communicate. Part of that is letting them know about the customers. Story 4. What a lot of people don't understand about software and electrical engineering is, it's more like plumbing than you would think. 
you really only use the hardcore math, i.e. anything that can't be simplified to networks of Ohm's law, in RF engineering or high-speed designs or power electronics. Everything else is look at the data sheet, follow the instructions, follow rules of thumb. All the circuits the guys at Palalu and Adafruit make, those are basically just a single IC that performs the function, and they followed the white paper for the chip, maybe with some slight modifications. I even read a teardown of the Salia logic analyzer, and from what I remember, the early versions were just a basic FPGA dev kit. It was well implemented, but really the reason it was successful was the whole package worked well, was well designed, and the software made it easy. Getting that design right and implementing it reliably is hard, but the fundamentals are not really hard. And the fact that software engineering is largely plugging systems into other systems is well documented. It's also by design, because people hate yak shaving. The trick is knowing what libraries and idioms are around. Story 5. Goodwill Associate here. Couple of things. This isn't a dump. We can refuse things, so stop your whining of why we can't take your mattress, crib, bed frames, humidifiers, etc. We price items about one-third of its original retail price. So if a table is $19, it will be sold for about $5. Also, no bargaining. Prices are set. The really, really good stuff that was donated gets sent to a pile called eBay and is sold on there with a Goodwill account. Jewelry, video game systems, baseball cards, etc. Story 6. I'm a cashier about to be a key holder. 1. We track your every move if we think you're stealing. And no, we don't think everyone steals. We aren't randomly sweeping at the aisle you're on almost every single time you walk in the door. 2. If you're a jerkwad, every employee knows by the end of the week. 3. Also relates to 2. Since everyone knows what you've been saying, we're keeping heavily aware of what words come out of your mouth. And if you're really being rude or acting like a pig, the managers are hiding on an aisle listening to you to slip up so you can be kicked out. 4. If you ask us to hold an item, we will. Seriously. If a sale is happening on Friday and you find an item in said sale on Wednesday, give it to us and we'll put it in the back for you. 5. Related to 4. If your item keeps flying off the shelves, just tell us. Once we get it off the truck, we'll hold it for you to buy. We held 10 boxes of cookies for a man because we kept running out and he was obsessed with them. 6. At least at my place of work? If you're short by a few cents, or if I seriously do not want to break your $20 bill over three cents, we'll take it out of the donation drawer. Donations go back to the companies at mine, if we have it. Edit. Aisle, not aisle. Sorry, dyslexic. Again, this just comes down to how you treat the customer-facing people. I'm sure it's a little bit different at other places. If you're nice to them, they'll be nice to you. These are people. I know, there are a lot of people that will dump on us because they think they're better than us. There's no reason to take it out on somebody else. And there's also the age-old saying, If you don't know, ask. Story 7. High school teacher. Sometimes on really tiring and long days during lecture, we sometimes lose our place or forget the right words. But we know there's a smart kid out there who does know. Instead of embarrassingly scrambling for notes... High schoolers smell fear and will pounce on you if you show it. We'll say some hogwash like, And so when we take this factor, we... What? Anybody know? Yes, Megan, what's the answer? It may look like we're prodding students to pay attention and reinforce learning, which is a tactic used often, but a good portion may be that we just had a brain fart or downright forgot and need help without losing attention. P.S. Before anyone jumps on it, yes, teachers are human and we act so with our students. It's not a matter of academic arrogance or being wrong in front of them. That happens, and it's okay. This is an example of days where patience is thin and student comment is not needed. Story 8. I work as a lab tech in a private environmental lab company. We mainly get samples from the government and a couple of other private companies. The instruments that we use to test for containments in the samples we receive are absolutely ancient. There's some stuff that's 20 plus years old that we're currently using to test on your drinking water and your soil. When those instruments start fouling up on us, 
We either Mickey Mouse the issue, or we have our old in-house mechanic of all things guy find a better, more reliable way to Mickey Mouse the problem. Also, we have jimmy-rigged fume hoods that don't really work as well. Literally, the lab is just falling apart, just like the instruments. Also, our software and hardware is old as hell. Like, we're talking about Windows 98. We're still using floppy disks to handle all your results of your samples. Old. We even have the fat desktop computer monitors as well. Story 9. I work at a pizza place. The more items you get on your pizza, the fewer of each item you will get while still being charged the same price per item. Ooh, that's a good one. I can understand that one. At some point, you have to consider the structural integrity of your pizza. Plus, you have to consider the cooking time. If you kept the same amount of ingredients for each one, that's going to be a little longer in the pizza oven, and your crust is probably going to get burned a little bit more. I totally understand that. Makes sense. It's just interesting that it's being pointed out right now. Story 10. I'm a young female in an assisted living home. Men may become wheelchair-bound, unable to speak or hear, but there is always one body part that still works. Story 11. People sometimes perish in hotel rooms. As soon as the body is out, we clean the room and put it back out for rent. Doesn't happen often, but there's a chance your bed had a not-alive person in it less than two hours before you checked in. Story 12. Combat Medic. Not so much a secret, but a key to being a lazy piece of dirt in a generally high-stress job is to teach the boots to do your job for you, essentially making everyone a medic in all but the most advanced stuff so they still have a reason to keep you around. So basically, outsourcing. Makes sense. That is generally for people with people skills, or if you need to learn people skills. As the ever-wise Ron Swanson once said, I'll work all night if it means nothing gets done. I'll choose to do nothing over doing something every time. Story 13. Former ballet dancer here. It's a total junk job, at least in the USA. Only large, internationally renowned companies pay well enough to live off of. Everyone else gets paid like $20,000 a year. And some are even worse and only pay per performance. You need to either be supported by your parents or spouse, or work a side job. Or two, you only have a contract for one season, usually August to May or so. And there's no guarantee that there will be a spot for you in the company the next year. If you get injured or get fat, you're probably going to get fired. Story 14. I work in technical support. The vast majority of the time, I know the fix immediately, and it's something I deal with a dozen times a day. If I say, I need to put you on a quick hold whilst I research that, it means I'm Googling the answer to your problem. If I say I need to put you on hold for a few minutes, it means I'm asking a coworker if they know what the answer is. If I say I need to call you back because I have to research more, it means none of us have any freaking idea what the issue is and I'll actually have to do some real work. Also, stop blurting out your passwords to me. I don't need to know what it is. Nobody does. If I need you to log into your account, I'll just ask you to type it when I remote into your machine. If you can't get in, I'll reset it to something else and we'll deal with the password change later. Story 15. If you see rabbits or chickens at a zoo, they're food. Why did I think of the goat in Jurassic Park that was chained to a post? And is that a similar situation to what happens at the zoo? It reminds me of the line, He doesn't want to eat, he wants to hunt. Chickens, I don't have much of a problem with. Animals hunting rabbits? That's a little bit unnerving. Story 16. Former nuclear engineer. It's actually pretty slow and boring. Story 17. I am unemployed. I get high and write haikus. Somebody has to. What's up with this post? Do you know what it is? Look at it again. Story 18. I'm a Zamboni operator, and most people don't know that we use hot water when shaving the ice. Huh. Neat trick. That'd speed things up. Not sure why it'd have to be a weird secret. Just kind of cool to know. Huh. Story 19. Software engineer. 
Literally everything is hanging by a thread, and it's amazing the internet hasn't fallen apart completely. Story 20. Call center slash technical support. The surveys you're sometimes asked to fill out are kind of hogwash in that anything below 100% counts as a fail. Some are slightly more forgiving, but usually not by a whole lot. So people who give you anything less than a perfect score for petty reasons like everyone can improve or I don't like the whole music are actively hurting you and might in the long run cost you your job. Vehicle assembly. Whatever you're driving contains a lot more zip ties than you would expect, especially if it's a lorry. Story 21. Largest secret of my profession are how completely understaffed the 911 communication center is. Most of the time, when you call 911, that person is also doing three other things at the same time. They're normally doing the job of two other people, and probably trying to get in a slightly warm meal also. 911 dispatchers don't care what you took to get high. Just tell us so we can help you. We do care about how you sustained that trauma injury, though. Not only to help treat you, but to keep the responding unit safe. Most large cities are now switching to a system to evaluate the patient over the phone so we don't send an ambulance and a fire truck to every single call. So facts are important when calling. Do you think some cities will try and use AI to lighten the load? It sounds crazy, but it also sounds like something people would try to attempt. I think that's a terribly bad idea. I don't think it will be the right response. I think the best response would be to make the job more attractive and pay more. But, you know, what do I know? Story 22. NASA engineer here. Y'all don't know anything. Story 23. We don't really check if we have any more in the back. We just go back there so we can chill for like five minutes. Story 24. Even if it's a nice vet clinic, sometimes doggy daycare is just putting your dog in a very small kennel with a bowl of water. Now, I know that's not the case with everyone. When I was a driver in a big city, there were several dog care centers I passed by where they were very free to roam around, especially at night. All the dogs had company and were free to roam around and play with each other. I think there were only a few that were in cages, and it was probably due to some social issue that they had. But yeah... If you really care about your pet, but you need to take a trip, research your kennels. Story 25. Most of the time, booking through a third party isn't saving you any money and can actually jerk you over if there's a problem with your room during your hotel stay. Story 26. RN, former EMT. If you go into cardiac arrest, you're probably going to expire. My state has some of the best revival rates in the country, and they are only like 15% if medical personnel witness the arrest. Story 27. Reality TV is anything but. Ever seen House Hunters on HGTV? The couple looking for a house actually already bought and live in one of the houses that they're looking at. The other houses are usually friends' houses, or houses that have sold but not closed or moved in yet. When the real world first came out on MTV, I made a conscious decision not to get involved in this genre. You know what doesn't make sense to me? If this is reality TV, real life unfiltered, why do the credits show writers? If it's real, what are you writing? Video editors I can understand. You want to cut out the boring parts and make it exciting. I get that. I don't get the writers, though. Anybody involved in story or writing on a reality show? Either you're doing something that makes this not real life, or you've managed to get a cushy job doing nothing. Story 28. I work at a public library. At least where I work, we don't keep any record of what items you've checked out or look up so that there's nothing to turn over to law enforcement. We also won't turn over any personal contact information to law enforcement without a warrant, and even then, we make them go through our IT department. And they're known to make a big production out of everything, easily wasting everyone's time. You are safe at a public library. Ask about anything without fear. I'm not sure if this is super secret, but there seems to be this idea that libraries are secretly tracking and judging, and that's just not true. If I can help an old man find YouTube videos of black women shaving their legs, 
I'm pretty sure I can help you find your Amish romances without judgment, Janice. Story 29. Field repairs may consist of taping parts of the plane back on. Don't worry, it's very good tape. Story 30. If a spicy dancer tells you their real name, it's almost certainly a secondary fake name to give you a false sense of trust and personal connection so that you're more likely to spend money on them. That's one of those things that just makes sense when you hear it. It's kind of like the personal version of two-factor authentication. I can totally understand that. You're dealing in a situation where people will be buying into this fantasy way too much. There are some people that know it's a fantasy and are willing to go along with it, and they understand there's a line. Unfortunately, there are far too many people who don't think there's a line. Story 31. I Google tons of things. I can't possibly remember how to do every feature of every application. Word, Excel, Visio, Win7, 8, 10, REMR, 25 other online applications, Firefox, Chrome, IE, Outlook, OWA, etc., etc., etc. I do IT support. Story 32. Grocery retailer. If your card is declined at my register, it's not going to undecline at the next register. I hope to God that truly isn't a secret. We offer to carry your bags to your car so you won't leave your cart in the parking lot. We eat and take home your returns. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 33. In a restaurant, whenever you ask your server to double check with the chef, even after we've told you that something can't be exchanged, swapped, changed as it's the middle of service and we're full, we might go into the kitchen, but most don't ask the chef. A lot of times, the answer is a flat no, followed by a lot of swearing from the chef due to stress. Story 34. Coast Guard. Please, for the love of God, stop doing stupid things in bad weather. Story 35. I've been a waiter for a long time, and the general public has no idea how many times I've seen my co-workers come in drunk as hell, but still make it through a shift and have no one notice. There's also at least a 60% chance that your bartender has snorted 80s yuppie go-go powder in the last eight hours. Story 36. IT engineer here. We know what you do on your PC. Story 37. When you call the IT support hotline, 50% of the time we're just Googling the issue that you're experiencing. Story 38. I deliver pizza and once, I took a pee in the bush outside the apartments at night before taking the pizza to the door. Don't trust the delivery boy. Story 39. I'm a line cook at a very nice restaurant. We are all substance-doing, tattooed-covered alcoholics. Well, not all, but most. I've met so many people who are shocked when I tell them where I work based on my looks. Story 40. Still in grad school, becoming an ecologist slash conservationist, but have worked in a wildlife rehab center. We are all major animal lovers, but our job sometimes consists of unaliving animals. Sometimes a lot of them. Story 41. That waiver you're signing practicing any leisure is useless. The company is responsible for your safety. However, there is a clause called Risks Inherent to the Practice of Activities, which means you cannot sue for a fracture playing hockey, but can definitely sue in the case of equipment or human failure. Story 42. I work at a health food store. Half the time, I don't know what the hell kind of herb you're talking about, or if it's going to cure your crazy ailment. I don't want to show you where the homeopathic medicine is, because I think it's hogwash. Bottom line is, eat better, exercise, and see a doctor if you're really sick. There are some basic remedies and fun things to play witch doctor with, but go to the hospital if you feel like you're unaliving. And most of the time, I'll tell you what's hogwash unless you're rude or ridiculously stubborn. I knew it. I absolutely knew it. There are some things that are actually proven. And obviously, vitamins are a big thing. Aside from that, a lot of mumbo jumbo. I wouldn't be surprised if there is some sort of product at a health store that's actually labeled mumbo-jumbo. Oh, I feel so much more alive during the day from taking my mumbo-jumbo nightly. Story 43. Teachers never grade all the work. Story 44. Counselor. 
We aren't rent a friends. Story 45. The milk you're drinking is not from cows. It's from my wife. Um, what? This has to be a reference to a TV show or movie. If anyone knows where this is from, let me know. If this is actually true, then this must be a very small batch kind of thing. I don't care how well endowed this person's wife is. You're not feeding that many people. Story 46. Third-party booking sites for hotels save you no money. Might even cost more. They're all generally owned by Expedia, too, even though they're different names. Story 47. I used to work in collections. If you're late for a bill, don't worry until the letters stop coming from the company you owe money to. Also, tell them first, and always be nice. There's always a way around it. We don't want to send things further unless you're a total jerk who calls up and yells at us because they can't pay their bill. Story 48. Probably too late, but I work for a political party at the state level. If you've ever donated any amount of money to a political candidate or organization, the party knows and records everything about you that they can get their grubby little hands on. There are full-time employees and interns that spend hours and hours every day doing extensive donor research. Story 49. We're being timed at the drive-thru. Please be considerate for the other customers. I feel like I'm trapped in a corner when a customer doesn't know what they want and forces me to remake their drink several times when there's a line in the drive-thru. Story 50. We still exist as a trade. Chimney sweep. Story 51. Behind every biomedical advance is a mountain of small, furry animal carcasses. Story 52. Telco worker. If you're not using an encrypted messaging app, we can see every text message you've ever sent or received. Story 53. Ever wondered how the mouth of a deceased person stays shut in an open casket wake? Yes, so it's shut. Not by the lips, but by the jaw and the nose wall under your lips. Story 54. I work at the local fast food hamburger place, and whenever we run out of hamburgers, we just run over to the McDonald's and just start serving everybody McDonald's. We put a new wrapper on it, and nobody can tell the difference. Story 55. When I worked in retail, customers always seemed to be under the impression that no matter your role within a retail business, whether it be on the checkouts or stock control, a lot of people tend to believe that if you work in a supermarket, you should know every single bit of information when it comes to nutritional value about every single item you used to do my head in. Story 56. Security officer here. If I think you're stealing stuff, all you have to do is run and you're in the clear since we're not allowed to detain or chase people, depending on the location. All I can do is write down details of your appearance and then hand the details over to police and let them hunt you down. I honestly hope I never have to deal with someone who tries to steal and then, when they get caught, try to play the victim. Story 57. I'm a librarian in a public library. Most items that get donated end up being donated to the recycling bin. I'm sorry, but we really don't need another coffee-stained dog-eared copy of Fifty Shades. And processing it takes time and money. Story 58. The amount of tax fraud committed by servers and bartenders in the service industry. A large portion of servers and bartenders will not claim 100% of their tips in order to pocket it. Plus, there's a good chance your server or bartender is high or drunk. Story 59. In the UK, I teach, but I'm a freelance developer for a friend's marketing business during holidays. They employ five full-time developers and refuse to hire women under 35. They can't handle the cost of potential maternity leave, nor take the risk of holding down the job open for so long with the refusal to come back. Story 60. GIS Data Analyst. Most data files we work with to make multi-million dollar decisions, ecological decisions, health-related decisions, or any other type are either out of date, inaccurate, imprecise, or have bad metadata. Ground truthing is inadequate, or the entire question is based on a false premise, or any combo of above. This means almost all of our results are suspect. Think of us as applied statisticians. Story 61 airline pilot here. You know those blankets that we give you on the flight? The airline never washes them. Ever. 
We just shake them out and shrink wrap them for a later flight. Every once in a while, we toss one that's unusable. Story 62. As a graphic designer, you aren't always paying for how quick something is done, but for the expertise of the designer. I will charge you way more than it should cost to digitize your drawing for a logo. If you hire a real designer, they will go through a lot of paper, drawing out thoughts, logos, and ideas. Those few logos you do see are actually the best out of 50 other ideas. It doesn't take me long to finalize your logo, but getting to that step is the hardest part. So stop saying you could have come up with that, because if you could, you would have. Story 63 Sometimes students are given a better grade than they should because we're too tired to really give a care anymore. Sometimes they're given a worse grade because of this. But those teachers suck. Story 64 I work for a parcel delivery service. Although stuff does get thrown, it isn't as rough as you think. Think of it as tossing something just hard enough to get to the top of the stack when you're in a hurry. Story 65 I drove for Uber for a few weeks. I had to get a vehicle inspection that required me to have my suspension in working order. No body damage and a whole lot of other things. I went to the Uber hub and paid for some guy to make sure my seatbelts work and check off every other box on the list. Story 66. Engineering Manager. To oversimplify my job, if there are multiple solutions, we use the cheapest one. Looking up existing equipment is a major part of my job. Why spend time designing something if I can buy it off the shelf? as long as it's cost-effective. This doesn't apply to all industries, but in building, it does. Story 67. Used to be a baggage handler for the airlines. Don't check a 49.5-pound bag and slap a fragile sticker on it. Would cover for gate agents, too, from time to time. Whenever your flight's delayed, for the love of all that is holy, please be understanding. We don't want to stay till 3 a.m. waiting for your flight just as bad as you don't. Story 68. I work in mental health, and a lot of times we see people with a bipolar diagnosis come who clearly aren't bipolar. They have borderline personality disorder. But telling a patient they have BPD can make them even more difficult to work with. So a lot of times I see mental health professionals just let it slide rather than correcting the diagnosis. Story 69. Physician here. We don't take antibiotics for the sniffles. Also, most of us give each other discounts or see other physicians free of charge. A few years ago, I had an elective plastic surgery procedure done. The surgeon gave me 20% off. So did the anesthesiologist. Depending on your state laws, we can write prescriptions for ourselves. Except substances. Story 70. Produce retailer here. Be sure to rinse your fruits and vegetables really freaking well. Because we sure as hell don't get paid enough to care what happens to it before and after it reaches the shelves. Seriously, though, it gets gross. Sometimes the fruits and vegetables are covered in unidentified water, or they're rotting from the inside and we just don't know it. Or maybe it just fell on the dirty floor and we put it back on the shelf. The list goes on. Story 71. I work retail, specifically a grocery store's deli. You'd be amazed at the difference in service you'll get if you say hi and ask how I'm doing instead of walking up and blurting your order at me. And if you say please and thank you, you better believe I'm going to charge you for things cheaper than what you're buying. Story 72. Hotel manager here. The rooms are often dirtier than you may imagine, even if they appear clean. Do not touch the carpet or cloth furniture. Always check the in-room Bibles for cash. Guests always extort us with a threat of bad reviews if we don't do XYZ for them. I've literally had a guest do this and demand 30 free nights because they misinterpreted a room description online. Just be nice to us and we'll hook you up. Story 73. That some public defenders do a really good job and some private defense attorneys a really poor one. That what you pay for and what you get in legal representation often have no connection. Story 74. I am a lawyer. Yes, we know our adversary. Yes, we will be chummy and joke around with him or her before the judge walks in. Yes, I'm still advocating for you slash against my adversary. Story 75. Recruiter here. Some companies don't want to hire old people. 
please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.